Hey, what is up, you pickled piplup? Bunch of new cards revealed over in Japan. First, we're going to be taking a look at these cards that are going to be coming out of the Mask of Change set that will come in April 26th over in Japan. And then also, all of the cards from Crimson Haze have also been revealed, and those will be making their way to Japan on uh, actually March 22nd, coming up here. When we get Temple Forces, they are getting a Crimson Haze, uh, and the cards from Crimson Haze and Mask of Change will be in our Twilight Masquerade set in may i believe may 22nd is when we're getting that set so we don't even have temporal forces yet and we're already seeing complete sets coming out of japan man i feel so behind right now it sucks it really does suck but let's go let's jump into these cards and i'll give y'all my thoughts so the first one is this pokemon here which i'm not gonna try and pronounce the name i don't know how to pronounce it not gonna worry about it for one grass energy put four damage counters on your opponent's pokemon in any way you like and then the main attack for this card is a stage one pokemon 70 hp uh, match all out for one grass energy, 70 damage, discard up to three basic grass energy from your Pokemon in play. This attack does 70 damage for each card discarded this way. So we cap out at 210 damage. I see this being able to probably synergize with the grass ogre pond. It accelerates a grass energy from your hand to itself, and then you draw one card. But like most one prize attacking decks that rely on having a two prizer on their bench, your prize trade is not great. Doing 210 damage as a one prizer is not bad. You do one hit KO charge RDX as well, which is pretty good. But if you have three two prizers on your bench, your prize trade into most matchups is not actually going to be great, especially when you're capped at 210 damage. That isn't quite enough. So maybe a cool meme deck with the grass ogre pawn. Yeah, but does not seem great. <laughs> Up next, we got the Monkey Dory. These next three cards are interesting. I think there's like there's some kind of trio in the video game. I didn't play the video game, so I actually don't know. But I'm pretty sure there's some kind of legendary trio or whatever. Um, the ability once your turn, if this Pokemon has any d darkness energy attached to it, you may move up to three damage counters from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, so it does require dark energy being on it, which is all of the abilities on these on these next couple Pokemon do, which is interesting. And then it's got the Mind Bend attack for a Psychic and a Colus. 60 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. So the attack, not very good. Obviously, it's here for the ability. And I saw an interesting combo that someone tweeted about on Twitter involving the Articuno that paralyzes your opponent's active Pokemon for two water energy. It does 50 damage to itself, and it has 110 HP. So you could paralyze your opponent's active Pokemon. And then if they can't move it, you have that 50 damage on yourself. You move that damage off yourself with the Monkey Dories. And then you can continuously attack with the Articuno over and over. And with the Monkey Dory's abilities, you can then knock out your opponent's active Pokemon on your turn. So you can continuously paralyze, trap your opponent's active Pokemon until you've drawn all six of your prize cards. So that's a pretty cool combo, pretty interesting combo. Um, we'll see how well it works. You'd have to not only set up the Articuno with the two water energy, but then also get some darkness energy on the Monkey Dories. But it theoretically could work. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, another one of these Pokemon with the abilities that requires a darkness energy attached is... I'm not even going to try and pronounce this Pokemon's name. If this Pokemon has a darkness energy attached to it, and if any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, flip a coin of heads prevent that damage. That's pretty good. Uh, now, you do need a darkness energy on it, and its attack does require a psychic energy to use, and it does 30 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. So initially, you look at this and you're like, hey, that seems decent in Gardevoir or with Gardevoir EX. Of course, because, um, yeah, you can load up a bunch of energy really aggressively with Guard Rex's ability and then attack, but it only has 120 HP compared to something like the Shiny Arcana Guard War that we're losing in rotation and the fact that you could put reversal energy on the Shiny Arcana Guard War. This thing really isn't hitting that hard unless you have a tool on it, and we already have Drifloon that kind of does that. It's really just the ability that makes this thing potentially better, but are you really playing Dark Energy or like Luminous Energy in your Gardevoir EX deck? Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but there might be some other combo that works with these cards because they all have like that same ability effect where it's like if you have a Darkness Energy on them, you get this huge bonus effect. And the abilities are all really good on these three Pokemon. I'm about to talk about the third one here in just a second. I feel like there's probably something coming in this set that combos with them to get that Darkness Energy on the Pokemon to be able to make it so they can abuse their abilities because this next one is actually pretty interesting as well uh if you got a darkness energy attached to it it gets 100 more hp and you do 100 more damage to your opponent's active pokemon if you have a darkness energy on it and its attack costs double fighting so i guess we could theoretically have a luminous on it and then also attach a basic fighting for our turn to attack with it but that's a pretty high cost for a one prize pokemon that could just get one hit ko'd and then we'd want to be able to chain attacks with so once again i feel like there has to be some form of weird darkness energy acceleration going on in this set that we don't know about yet that will probably combo with these three cards we're gonna have to wait and uh 
I'll have to wait and see on that. But also, but definitely, what I want to say, definitely very powerful abilities. And they seem like they could be pretty decent if there is some kind of weird energy acceleration that works with them. Got some interesting trainer cards here. The first one is the Carmine. I actually think this supporter is really, really good. Uh, if you go first, you may play this card during your first turn. Discard your hand and draw five cards. Cards. Now, obviously, it's just a worse research, right? But you can use it on your first turn. So it's a really cool supporter to be included as a one of in decks that play Luminion. So you have like an aggressive turn one play going first. If you open up with a pretty slow or awkward hand, or if you're just gonna have to go use Luminion for an Iota on your next turn anyways, may as well use Luminion for the Carmine right now and set yourself up better going into your second turn of the game. It's like kind of like Squawkabilly, but you don't have to play Squawkabilly. You can just play Luminion, which not, is not only good on your first turn, but is good on following turns as well, where Squawkabilly is limited to that first turn use, and that's basically it. So yeah, the Carmine, really, really sick, I think overall. Definitely gonna be included as probably a one of in most Luminion, or most decks that play Luminion, or might even prompt some decks to start including Luminion, because it's not only a good card in the mid-late game, but now you can use it on that first turn to get yourself going when you have those slower starts. Up next, we got the Kieran Supporter. Choose one, switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Eh, it's okay. During this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX or active Pokemon V. It's all right. Plus 30 damage off of Supporter is not bad, but it's not great. It's okay, and I'm sure we'll probably see a deck or two take advantage of this where your numbers are just a little bit off, and especially if you're comboing this alongside a deck that already has pretty good draw power like a b barrel deck or in a pidgeot deck with the quick search and you can even get this involved uh with luminian as well you could luminian for this so you have an extra way to go find it so yeah i think it's a decent card nothing spectacular but doing 30 more damage can be a big difference maker in certain situations so it'll definitely see some play up next you have that bug catching set look at the top seven cards of your deck you may choose up to two in any combination of grass pokemon and basic grass energy cards you find there reveal them and put them into your hand then shuffle the other cards back into your deck so pretty Pretty strong card, I would say, overall. Pretty strong card. I think any type would be happy to have this card. It turns out Grass is the type that does have this card. So, yeah, pretty strong. Will, of course, be heavily reliant on how good of Grass Pokemon there are in the format. And right now, I mean, Ogre Pond seems okay. This obviously kind of combos well with the Matcha Pokemon that we just read earlier, for sure. So, it'll be played in that deck, but that seems like more like a meme deck than anything. Um, and for the Ogre Pond deck, like, are you really playing this over a Vessel or just some Nest Balls? I don't know if you're really going to make that leap into the Ogre Pond deck to combo this with the Grass Ogre Pond. So this card is okay right now, but of course it is reliant just on the Grass Pokemon we have in the format. And we have been seen very few cards that have been revealed from this set so far. Before we jump into talking about the cards from Crimson Haze, though... If y'all are looking to pick up any of the newest set coming out in America over here, Temporal Forces, well, then Game Grid has got you covered. Game Grid SLC, link, of course, will be in the description. They got the Temporal Forces products available for order, so go check them out over there. And of course, you can use code AzulGG, get yourself a discount, and link will be in the description. All right, so up next, all of Crimson Haze has been revealed. Once again, this is being comboed with some of those other cards we just talked about in our twilight masquerade set which won't be coming out until like may 22nd or something like that some of these we've gone over some of them we haven't i'm sure some of you have seen some of them before but i haven't personally talked about them, so we're gonna be talking about all of that here today first up we got the iron leaves non-ex iron leaves and um the second attack here is pretty interesting for grass double colorless 100 damage if any of your pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack during your opponent's last turn this attack does 60 more damage so 100 Plus 60 times two grass weakness when we're punching a Charizard is 320 damage. We're coming up just 10 damage short on a KO on a Charizard EX, but I think that's probably on purpose. So this can only be utilized in future box decks to combo with Iron Crown, which increases our future Pokemon's damage by 20, which then gets us to that one hit KO on a Charizard EX after it just knocked out one of our Pokemon. I'm assuming that's like the reason that that number lines up the way it does. It's supposed to be an answer for Charizard in future box decks. And I can see it being pretty good if future box is able to uh, get things together. And, and it doesn't seem like it's that powerful of a deck. It seems like future hands is the way the future decks are going right now. But it would be another tool in the arsenal for the future box would be the iron leaves. Um, I have this. Uh, there's this Pulcha Geist right here. I didn't read the other one because this one seems... Um, better for sure with the ability as long as this pokemon is on your bench prevent all damage done to this pokemon by attacks both yours and your opponents yeah i think we'd rather be playing this uh poultry for sure 
damage bench protection is pretty good still only 30 hp but you know if they can't snipe us off the bench it doesn't really matter um and then there is a however you pronounce this sin i'm not gonna try ex 240 hp infusion retribution uh, for colorless energy choose one of your opponent's pokemon put two damage counters on that pokemon for each basic grass energy in your discard pile so this obviously combos with the other however you pronounce the name of this pokemon that we just read from the other set that one discards energy to your discard pile to do damage and you can use this one to put damage counters on uh, a pokemon for each grass energy or discard pile then you shuffle those energy back to your deck the second attack pretty underwhelming matcha splash grass colorless 120 heal 30 damage from each of your pokemon eh, that's not very good but the first attack is okay for the matcha meme deck i guess i guess is what we're going for with that Macargo ex not great i don't think it's a terra pokemon hot magma 70 damage for a fire and a colorless your opponent's active is not burned eh. fire fire colorless ground burn 140 damage each player discards the top card of their deck this attack does 140 more damage for each energy discarded in this way that could be a lot of damage i just don't know how you're consistently setting that up there is a supporter currently in the format uh, i believe it's giovanni's charisma is the one i want to say it is you take a energy from your opponent's active pokemon and put it on top of their deck that would combo well with this that could hit us have us hitting for 280 damage not not quite one hit KOing the big ex pokemon in the format that would also be our supporter for turn this thing has two fire energy and a colorless energy to be able to attack sure there's magma basin and we got armor rouge but is that enough to make this thing a contender no i don't think so if there was a way to set an energy on top of our deck as well so we could go for really really big one hit KOs, maybe but even then i'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that great to be honest yeah Macargo ex not it uh for sure and you know, we'll keep moving along here I think up next we got the Froakie. There's a really cool Greninja in this set that we'll be talking about in just a second. The Froakie's got a really good attack as well. The Flock for a Water Energy. Search your deck for up to two Froakie and put them onto your bench and shuffle your deck. It's a uh, Pokemon with a really good evolution that has a good attack. Hey, not bad. Frogadier doesn't really have anything special going on for it. 90 HP, numbing water for a water. Flip point of heads. Your opponent's active is now paralyzed and 20 damage. Eh, not great. Not really doing a whole ton. Uh, there is this more Paco here that I'll mention real fast. Once on your turn, you may look at the top card of your deck then you may discard it as its ability and then for lightning energy attach up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile to your pokemon in any way you like so not a terrible attack uh the ability is like okay we've seen abilities like this in the past be decent never like super good obviously could combo with the macargo deck so you could like peek the top card of your deck and see if you wanted to attack with your macargo i guess maybe um yeah the more peko is is all right the more peko is all right we've talked about iron thorns in the past i'll quickly mention it here 230 hp definitely gonna be part of some kind of future maybe not box honestly this could just be an addition to future hands possibly while this pokemon is in the active spot pokemon with rule box in play except any future pokemon don't have any abilities and then for lightning double colors we're doing 140 we want energy from this pokemon to one of your benched pokemon so probably will be played in some kind of future deck i guess you could also play it like with maridon and just use it as your early attacker the ability is obviously very strong shutting down stuff like charizard and guard ex and pidgeot ex and i mean minion and squawkability it, it does a lot it does it does shut down quite a few pokemon and uh the damage is all right as well so we can leave it in the active hit with it for a couple turns probably gain some form of lead and then we just kind of snowball our lead from there with our follow-up future box deck future hands deck stuff like that it'll definitely see some play not the best ability lock we've ever seen we've definitely seen better we've seen better most recently even just with path to the peak definitely better overall but it is some form of ability lock in a format where we're headed to that has basically none until we get that card um the enamorous here i will mention because the attack is actually pretty interesting for lost box decks psychic double colorless if you have a pokemon with the same type as one of your opponent's pokemon in play this attack is 120 more damage that's 200 damage for psychic double colorless and the attack cost is really really efficient for lost box to utilize usually with the big attackers in lost box they'll be able to hit for something around 200 damage like the dragonite that hits for 250 or the roaring moon that can hit for 220 and has the frenzy gouging you're looking at energy costs of like double dark plus colorless so you have to like attach a dark for turn for turn unless you want to use double mirage gate or with the dragonite you have to attach the water for turn and then search out a water and a lightning off of mirage gate if you only want to use one mirage gate with the psychic double colorless energy cost it's like pretty convenient you can either attach the psychic for turn and you just need two of two different types of energy in your deck doesn't matter what they are search those out or attack in or the psychics in the deck and you attach any energy from hand as long as you have another energy that's not a psychic in your deck and once again you're attacking for 200 damage as long as you have a pokemon in play with the same type as one of your opponents in play 
Lost Box does play a different bunch of different types of Pokemon and can usually line up with something on your opponent's board, but that'd be really like the big hindrance for this. But if if it does line up in a, enough matchups, then this card could actually be pretty good in Lost Box for sure. Uh, the Screamtail, the more I've thought about this card, the more I like it. That sudden shriek attack for a colorless energy. You can use this attack only if you go second and only during your first turn. During your opponent's next turn, they can't play any supporter cards from their hand. This could be a super powerful way to slow down your opponent. It combos super well with Jet Energy. We Jet Energy it to the active. Uh, we use Sudden Shriek, then we retreat it and start attacking with something else, getting ourselves ahead in whatever matchup we're in. I really like the idea of this card. Now, getting it to work and actually having it function is like something else entirely, but I really like the idea of maybe building a deck around Sudden Shriek and choosing to go second, then locking our opponent out for a turn of supporters, or it's just when we do go second, even if we prefer to go first, we have a way to like gain tempo by using the Sudden Shriek. Sudden Shriek. And it does seem like it would be best in a deck with Jet Energy, I just can't really think of a deck that like currently plays for jet energy that you could easily put this into besides maybe lugia but even then like the read the wind from the lugia is also pretty powerful to get a setup and get going so eh, i'm actually not too sure what this would work in but i really like the idea of the sudden shriek that is for sure big fan of sudden shriek just gotta cook it up all right the greninja probably the biggest card that people are hyping up coming out of this set 310 hp stage 2 terra pokemon we get that all get all that out of the way Ninja Blade for a water energy. You may search your deck for any one card and put into your hand, then shuffle your deck. That's a pretty solid attack there. One water energy for 170 damage. Search your deck for any one card. We KO stuff like Luminion and Squawkability and basically two hit KO everything else in the format. We do one hit KO uh, Arceus as well because we, uh, <laughs> we are fighting type. And then the big attack that everyone's talking about is the Water Colors Colors of Duplicates Barrage. Discard two energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. It seems solid. It seems all right. It's nothing like ridiculous. I think uh, people are hyping it up a little bit more than what it actually is and is going to be, but it does seem solid. Weakness to Psychic as well, which seems to be like a solid weakness to have right now for where things are trending. Uh, of course, that remains to be seen how good Garvor might actually be, but yeah, I'm excited for this card. Seems decent. Uh, the first attack, of course, like we still have Manaphy in the format, but with the first attack searching your deck for any one card, you could easily set yourself up to pull off canceling clone plays around a Manaphy. Use the Ninja Blade, search your deck for canceling clone or boss. If you have canceling clone or boss in your hand, you go canceling clone plus boss, and then you bring up the Manaphy and get around it and snipe two Pokemon for 120 damage. Not bad. And there's a, there's a special energy card in this set as well that combos really, really well with the Greninja EX that we'll talk about here in just a second. Uh, I'll mention this Halucha real fast. It is a potentially solid comeback fighting type Pokemon uh, or prize swing fighting type Pokemon for two fighting energy. Prize count 50 damage. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, this attack does 90 more damage. That's 140. Uh, that's 280 hitting into an Arceus, but it does cost double fighting energy. I don't know how we're getting two fighting energy on this thing. Yeah, that, that, that'd be tough. That'd be tough to quickly do, but it might be possible. Uh, I will mention this Tinglu here for a second real fast because... It feels like we're so close to like getting a good spread deck again. The Miss Mages in the current format is like okay. Uh, the Ground Crack for one fighting energy. If a stadium card is in play, this attack does 30 more 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Then discard that stadium. That's pretty good. 30 to the active, 30 to each of the bench Pokemon for one fighting energy. We can do that on our first turn going second. Now we do need a stadium in play, but you could play like what like seven or eight stadiums to try and attack six to seven times with this to spread enough damage to clean up the clean up the game i don't know it just it's that's solid man fees of course still in the format pretty popular card yes yeah, probably not gonna be great but i don't know that's a good attack <laughs> that's a good attack that's all i really gotta say maybe it could be used as like a tech card in a deck for certain matchups either like discard stadiums or just like spread damage to set up for your bigger attacks later on i could see that i guess uh blood moon ursa luna ex insanely powerful card we talked about it before um and even though it's just gonna be like a one of index yeah, it's a ridiculously powerful card the ability this Pokemon's a Blood Moon attack costs one colorless less to use for each prize card your opponent has already taken. So your opponent's drawn four prize cards. Our Blood Moon costs colors, 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 but they've drawn four, so it costs four colors less, so it costs one colorless energy, or they're at one prize card, so it literally costs zero energy. Actually, I actually didn't even think about this. Uh, Blood Moon, 240 damage. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. So this is like a late game closer or just really efficient attacker to close out the game or to utilize in the end game to keep us in the game i can see like basically any deck potentially utilizing this to help your like two prize trade um like you could even like play this in like a maridon deck and then like maridon if you draw two prize cards against a chi and pow deck and then they knock you out for two prize cards and you knock them out for two prize cards and you can't quite set up like another maridon to close out the game you could just go blood moon ursa luna attach attack and that's uh, 240 damage that knocks out a chi and pow so yeah this card is insanely powerful we'll definitely see quite a bit of play 
and yeah just really really good card overall <laughs> it's just a powerful one uh, unfair stamp another powerful card that uh, i think i'll really enjoy personally the kind of play that will come into play when you are playing up against a deck that is playing this card or you are playing this card yourself uh, you can only play this card if one of your pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn each player shuffles their hand into their deck then you draw five cards and your opponent only draws two cards and it's an item card it's not even your supporter for turn you maybe used your supporter to find it that's possible but if you didn't you could combo this with boss or research or i mean any other support you wanted to really and that's just like super powerful early game disruption you could be playing this on turn two you go first your opponent takes a knockout on their first turn and then you go unfair stamp knockout and progress from there yeah super powerful card i'm personally going to be a huge fan of it and uh, i'm excited to see the kind of gameplay that comes from this card when you play a deck with it or play up against it with a deck that you know plays it definitely it's going to shake things up that is for sure it's not going to be one of those cards like not every deck has to build their deck around this it's not like knowing that there's like a popular deck with pats of the peak pats of the peak in format or like ability lock arbiter um, but it will change how you do approach your games up against a deck that does play this in like a good way i think it'll be like a good healthy card to have in the format and i'm excited for it enhanced hammer got reprinted discard special energy attached to one of your opponent's pokemon pretty cool we got the hyper aroma here i think this one's being a little bit overhyped from what i've seen on twitter search your deck for up to three stage one pokemon reveal them and put them into your hand then shuffle your deck that's cool that's okay it's an item card that we would want to use on turn two fairly aggressively and if we're using arvin to go get this theoretically why would we not just arvin for tm evolution and then use tm evo possibly a turn sooner than we could even utilize this to then evolve our pokemon i couldn't tell you why i guess for other decks that are probably like stage one attacking decks this card is pretty good so when you go first you can use this on turn two and i don't know maybe the matcha deck you get like all the matcha squad set up or something like that that could be a thing uh, but yeah for like decks that are trying to get to a stage two i think tm evo is always better decks that are trying to like stop at a stage one though you know go first get some basics down turn two hyper aroma the stage one's coming to play we start attacking the hyper aroma does kind of make sense in decks like that but if we're trying to get all the way to a stage two eventually i think the tm evolution just always makes way more sense than playing the hyper aroma and then we also get to play like a different a spec as well alongside just using tm evolution to get to our stage ones but still pretty solid powerful a spec uh for sure i definitely like that we're seeing the follow the a, a specs that follow up prime catcher they look good they look cool they seem solid uh, switch got reprinted pokemon catcher got reprinted as long as we have boss in the format i'm kind of fine with the idea of pokemon catcher existing in the pokemon tcg as like a way for decks to potentially be more aggressive by playing that in heavy counts or over boss in general so yeah if boss is around i'm content with like pokemon catcher being around as well more aggressive uh option or, or kind of just like a way to build decks to be more aggressive i should say i like that as an option in, uh, in the card pool love ball search your deck for a pokemon with the same name as one of your opponent's pokemon and play reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your deck i could see this being played as a one of in decks like the most popular deck in the format maybe like maybe if charizard is like 20 25 of the meta you play like one love ball i could see that but besides that not a very good card obviously survival cast speaking of a specs and them seeming cool seeming good also i think we'll be getting in our set in may we should be getting six a specs i believe so we've seen three of them and now we're just going to kind of wait and see what the other three are that are going to be coming out in the the mask set over in Japan. I don't think any of those have been revealed for that set. If the Pokemon this card is attached to has full HP and we'd be knocked out by damage from an attack from an opponent's Pokemon, that Pokemon is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10, then discard this card. So this card does have the potential to be really, really toxic through looping it through something like Roseanne's backup. If that doesn't rotate, honestly, I don't remember if that rotates or not. It's not a very good card, so it's not one I keep on, keep on mind. Um, or Silene. Uh, you use Silene, get ahead, put the survival cast back in the deck, and I'm not gonna lie, thinking about it now, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure someone told me Silene doesn't rotate, but now I'm like second guessing it. Silene also maybe rotates, but if there's a card that can recover this, you it could be pretty toxic because like your opponent attacks your Pokemon, they knock it out, you survive with 10 HP, then you just like retreat into a different full full HP Pokemon, recover the survival cast with a card, draw back into it somehow, attach it to your Pokemon, and now they have to go through another survival cast. But in the current format, we do have lost vacuum, so I could see points in the meta um, or in future formats where vacuum is really low played that you could get away with uh, a pretty good result in a major tournament with survival cast at a point where it's just like yeah if no one's playing lost vacuum this is really good if a decent amount of decks are playing lost vacuum or people know survival cast is really good they'll probably include a lost vacuum which makes survival cast 
not very good because lost vacuum says it's a lost zone so you can't even recover it even after they get rid of it but lost vacuum does rotate before survival cast does so this might be a waiting game for survival cast survival cast might be waiting until next rotation when lost vacuum rotates and then it might have its moment we just gotta wait like about about a year but that's fine also there is probably a deck or two that will utilize this card for certain matchups the only deck right now that is consistently playing vacuum I guess besides Arctina, Arctina's been playing as well, is Charizard. Pretty much every Charizard deck is playing one lost vacuum. But if you already beat Charizard and you can use the survival cast for other matchups, hey, that's fine. We take we can take that up against Charizard because we're favoring against Charizard and use survival cast to get ahead, to get ahead in other matchups. Uh, Caretaker, Lucian, don't really talk about those. Perrin is interesting. Reveal up to two Pokemon from your hand and shuffle those cards into your deck. Then search your deck for up to to that many Pokemon, reveal them and put them to your hand. So if you're playing a deck with a lot of Pokemon, this card is actually pretty cool and interesting. I can't think of a deck like right now, currently off the top of my head, that would make sense to play this over something just like Arvin for TM Evolutions. Like Guardi kind of comes to mind, but it's like I'd rather play Arvin's in TM Evolution. So yeah, Perrin, not great, I don't think. Lana's Assistance, kind of like a replacement for Clara. Clara does rotate with this rotation coming up. Put up to three and a combination of Pokemon that don't have a rule box and basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. So Clara could get up to two basic energy and up to two Pokemon, even if they have a rule box. I definitely think Lana's is just kind of a, Lana's Assistance here, I think is just like a nerfed, just a nerfed Clara. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Clara never felt overly broken or too powerful, but basically Clara, but I do think it's a nerf overall. I think Clara was definitely a little bit better of a card. Uh, Boomerang Energy. This energy is super sick. I absolutely love this card. How good will it be? I don't really know, of course, but it definitely combos with the Greninja, probably the Greninja EX. If this card, it provides a colorless energy, by the way, one colorless energy. If this card is discarded by the effect of an attack, like Greninja's attack that discards two energy to then do 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, um, by the effect of an attack used by the Pokemon this card is attached to, attach this card from your discard pile to that Pokemon after attacking. So you could use the attack with the Greninja, do 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, discard two boomerang energy from the Greninja, and then those boomerang energies go immediately back to your Greninja, and then you can just duplicate barrage all over again, which is super sick. Yeah, the energy is super sick. Um, obviously, Greninja seems like the initial partner to pair it with. What will be able to be paired with in the future? I'm not sure. I'm sure there'll be quite a few cards that take advantage of that. Yeah, but the super sick, uh, super sick effect on that special energy. All right, that's gonna do it. That's all the cards. Let me know what you guys think about all these cards in the comment section. As always, did I miss anything? Was there something else I should have talked about? Is there any combos that I missed with any of the cards I did talk about? And I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.